Just take five, just take five. Stop your busy day and take the time out to see if I'm alive. Though I'm going out of my Hi guys, Elizabeth Loninger here. Today I'm coming to you from my living room and I am joined by Walter Fischbacher who is my husband and he is also a pianist and um, all-around musician and um, maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself well I'm a pianist I studied classical piano I'm from Austria originally so I studied in Vienna and I moved to New York City almost 30 years ago I went to the new school here for more jazz studies mm -hmm. and I'm working as a pianist and other things ever ever since then so we ran a recording studio together for 15 years here in the city mm -hmm. also tune pianos uh, fixed pianos and well i'm still playing piano but you also still do some mixing and mastering i believe i do i was mm -hmm. doing that uh as part of uh our recording studio low fish productions and i still have a few clients from back there mm -hmm. But in recent years, you've built this business, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on this channel here. You have been touring a lot with different musicians. Can you tell us a little bit about the concept behind that? Mm -hmm. Well, it all started out uh, really booking stuff in, in Europe for my trio originally. Well, first I got a sideman gig with uh, the Czech trumpet player Lazo Deci, and he was sort of my my role model for the touring. When was that? When you when that did you start? That was two thousand one. Yeah. Two thousand one. Yeah. Wow. So he had it set up. He had a, a van over there, uh, a full PA, full backline. So we were traveling with the whole the whole shebang, and we were doing all one nighters for one month, setting up the PA every night, playing the gig breaking it down going to a hotel and repeat and that's pretty much my business model and it took me a few years to to build that up for myself since i'm from austria it's a little bit easier than let's say for american artists because i have a home base over there i do still have some contacts over there so over time you know i got a, a touring van over there uh, i got my own pa i finally got my own backline so i have drum set i have a bass amp everything you need that that certainly makes it easier mm -hmm. yeah when did you specifically start touring with singers apart from me i mm -hmm. mean we've been touring together for many many years mm -hmm. but you know bringing bringing singers because it seems like the, one of the main aspects of that touring thing with singers was that you were bringing singers over from the states specifically from new york to tour with you when did that start mm -hmm. that's correct that started in 2015 was the first non-family singer I brought on the road, <laughs> Alita mm -hmm. Moses is her name. She actually made it pretty big. She's touring with uh, Jacob Collier right now and playing stadium. So she's doing well and uh, I'm actually glad her mm -hmm. career took off. So yeah, it took me about 10 years to build up my, my infrastructure there and also most important thing, I, I work with different booking agents over there, and one of them, uh, Jerzy Schweda in Czech Republic, uh, he's the, the driving force behind it, I could say. So he usually books at least uh, two weeks solid that you could use as, a, as an anchor, and then I try, that's only Czech Republic, and then I try to book around that with my own contacts and I have two other booking agents that book the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. So you had um, you had a booking agent in Austria, I think, mm -hmm. and also in Germany? Peter Wagner in, mm -hmm. in Austria and, and recently I hooked up with a new booking agent, Alexander Agency mm -hmm. out of Cologne. So we're all working together and, you know, creating a patchwork of of a schedule that in the end usually works out. So it sounds like, and of course that's a leading question because I know what it's like, but for uh, the benefit of, of you guys uh, watching this, it sounds like those are, the schedule is pretty packed. Do you play every night? Do you have days off? How does that work out? Well, to give you an idea, the upcoming tour, which starts actually in, in five days with Lauren Henderson, 
we played 29 shows in 28 days and it's all one oh night. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty dense. Yeah, it's pretty dense. And for two reasons. First, foremost, the financial reason, if you have a day off, it costs money. Since our budget is usually very tight, if I have a day off, I have to pay a per diem for the band, I have to pay for the hotel and there's no income. So a day off is to be avoided in the mm. first place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's nice to take a day off. But the second reason, I actually like to play every day because you, you keep the flow going. Mm -hmm. If you play 15 shows, you have one day off, the next show feels like you haven't played for a week, for me at least. Mm -hmm. So it, it keeps the musical flow going also. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's easier for instrumentalists to say that I'm I'm aware. For singers, it might be harder because they have a longer recovery time than instrumentalists. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. So, what does a day-to-day -day routine look like when you're on the road? Like, mm -hmm. start us off in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, it's mostly determined by how how much we have to travel, how far the distance is to the next gig. And who does the driving? me <laughs> <laughs> he has i mean we've done crazy stuff when i remember in in i think was last last october um it was the first show was in hilden which is close to dusseldorf and then we drove all the way down to um southern germany what was the name of the town um, Can't remember. um uh, yeah but oh was, jazz uh, garmisch partenkirchen right so that was a really long drive and uh, and we also, I think we hit some traffic as well. And uh, we had to get up at 6 a.m. in the morning and then drive all day and then set up and play. That was, mm. yeah. But it's not like that every day. So no. That, that, would be, that would not be possible. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say we have a two to four hour drive. So we at the hotel. Sometimes you pack the equipment the day before, sometimes not. So then we have to go to the venue, pack up the stuff which is the whole PA backline instruments everything so it's a whole band full of equipment so you're also bringing subwoofers yes we subwoofers. also bring subwoofers <laughs> <laughs> just I in know case. Because... just in case yeah. and it sounds better so my concept is really you know to make it easy for the promoter he saves usually on the, on the sound guy he doesn't have to rent the PA so it's better for the promoter it, in most cases, it's also better for us because we know exactly what kind of sound we get. Yeah. We know our equipment and usually it's faster too. So uh, back to the daily routine. So we get up, have breakfast, uh, depending how far they drive, we get in the car. Usually we try to uh, get to the hotel first, see how the accommodation is just to make sure everybody got his room. So if we do that after the gig and it's late night and no one's around, it's bad news. So as an organizer, I have to make sure accommodation is right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then we go to the venue whenever it's possible to get in there, set up our, our equipment, do a quick sound check. So usually that takes, depending on uh, how, how difficult the loading is, takes about an hour. And then we usually done. Once the PA set up the sound check, takes 10 minutes so that's usually really fast well then we go back to hotel chill a little bit have lunch or have have dinner mm -hmm. usually the singers have dinner after the show drummers have dinner before the show so that's you don't have dinner i don't have dinner so that's usually routine <laughs> well and then we do the gig and then it's either after party or packing the equipment and go to hotel Mm -hmm. and repeat rinse and repeat and depending on the situation sometimes you have to pack the van the night after right after the show and sometimes you have to leave the equipment in the club and pick it up the next morning sometimes so for, be... for safety reasons you don't yeah. want to leave all the equipment in the van on the street so it depends where mm -hmm. you are and if yeah. it's possible to get in the next day or whatever yeah i mean our van over the years has been broken into a few times so that is definitely something that you want to consider. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit um, about the singers that you've been touring with? So um, you've mentioned Alita Moses. Who else mm -hmm. are some of the names that you've toured mm -hmm. with? I did a little cheat list. <laughs> In order of appearance, it's Alita Moses. We started 2015. Beat Kestley, he's actually a good friend of mine who I've been working with for, for a longer time. 
Then Audrey Mattels, Elian Amherd, Stephen Santoro, Marianne Sullivan, Sullivan, sorry, Marianne Sullivan, Amy Allen, Emma Larson, and coming up Lauren Henderson and Arta Jakobsone. Mm-hmm. That's that's the list. Also, uh, uh, Audrey Mattels landed a pretty sweet gig too. She's playing with Nile Rogers and Chic stadium tours Mm -hmm. around the world she's playing madison square garden next week this week so congratulations audrey yeah that's pretty amazing (laughs) um okay and you've already told us a little bit about how the booking works Mm -hmm. but maybe we can just go a little bit more into that so we have you have three booking agents you got um yushi shveda in czech republic so he tends to and he books about two years ahead i think something like that yeah so he fills up two solid weeks mm-hmm. and um and it's like what are the challenges that you find um putting a tour like that together and filling it up well it's always a hustle people might think well i'm doing this for 20 years you know i got my contacts i just picked up the phone and the schedule is ready it's always a hustle and then it depends also what, what kind of promotional material I have if it's an interesting project and and stuff like that yeah it's always a hassle mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I have to take care of logistics you know how, how are the gigs lined up is it a lot of driving right. and then of course the financial aspect of it mm-hmm. does it pay off you now with gas prices and stuff it's getting increasingly difficult mm-hmm. so th- this year it seems like there's there's been more challenges actually because of Definitely. gas well it's energy costs gas flights are more expensive also post-covid audiences i think worldwide are a little bit shrinking i mean it's the same the same problem here in the states yeah. even for broadway shows or, or classical venues people seem to either be scared to go out or are getting very comfortable on their couch watching Netflix. So it's a mixture of that, that uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes this fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I think inflation and the, like for us, because um, you're bringing people over. We get paid in Euro, not a dollar is very strong. So that takes 10 to 15% out of the equation. So it's, it's getting a little bit harder. Right. And that usually comes out of your income, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and um, so you mentioned already uh, what kind of promo material do you have? Is it an interesting project? So um, this might be interesting for, for you singers out there who would like to go on tour. What do you think or what would you love to see that singers have in place before they go on tour? Mm-hmm. What do you need? Mm, that's actually a good question. Also an interesting uh, aspect is how do I find the the singers I want to collaborate with? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's uh, actually one of the agents finds a singer that he likes and then he asks me to check her out and see if I could work with them or contact them and ask them if they'd be interested. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he just has a slot open and asks me, can you bring a singer over? And then it's actually up to me to, to look for a singer. And, well, what do I do? First, I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I know? <laughs> Who do you know? Yes, yes. Then I look, you know, since I'm in New York, in the New York jazz scene, who's who's up and coming or who's ha- who has a presence here and who might fit together with me musically. And then it depends largely what kind of promo material is out there. You know, I go check out the websites. Are there videos? that represent the music they, they they would actually do live. And that's a very important aspect. If I can't find any material, I can't do anything because I have to present that same material to the promoters that book or not book mm. the act. So that's that's number one. And it's mostly about really videos mm-hmm. at, this, at this point. Yeah. So as a singer, you need decent videos. You need some kind of decent website with current material some usable press pictures that's that's the first thing Mm -hmm. i would also add to that uh a good um quotable press release or bio a short quotable press release or bio because otherwise you have to rewrite i have to rewrite it and uh, i have rewritten i think Almost all, all, of them. all actually, all of them, all of the bios on the uh, the list of singers that Walter has toured with. 
So you're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, so promo material and video. Video is super important and not just something from a studio, but really something that gives you a live idea. And it really... It could needs... also be f from a studio. I think that, that as long mm -hmm. as it's good quality and represents the mm -hmm. music you're doing. Like Lauren Henderson, she has a ton of, of studio videos that mm -hmm. work very well. So that... Yeah, I think by that I mean that I mean she did actually sing live in that video. Yes. Like it's a, it's yes. a studio. It's recorded in a studio, mm -hmm. but everybody's playing live, so it's not some shiny production That's with loop synced. Yeah, yeah. Yes, with mm -hmm. like ten thousand backup vocals. And um, so, what about other aspects? What what do the singers have to have in place for a successful tour? Like talk about set list, for instance. Mm -hmm. I mean, what makes it easy for me or for every musician involved? If you get a somewhat precise set list, let's say, we usually need 12 to 14 songs, probably, if you have a list of 20 songs, so that gives us something extra. Have decent charts and, if possible, recordings of the arrangements you want to do. That's the three things. And my personal pet peeve is don't give me a link to Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one. That's a new one I've heard a complaint about. Yeah, yeah, that's usually what I get. I don't have a Spotify account. If I'm on the road and want to listen to the example, let's say I'm on tour with another band and then I have a tour coming up with that singer, I'm sitting in the van, Spotify is not working, I don't have international roaming that's fast enough, so I can't listen to So. You know, prepare some kind of Dropbox or Google Drive link or something with MP3s of your of your sound examples, mm -hmm. decent PDFs, and a, a set list that exists of the songs we actually do, and not twenty extra songs that might or not you know make it very precise. That mm -hmm. that makes everybody's life easier. And what about considering? the shape of a concert like would you prefer that a singer has an idea of um you know like the beginning a middle and an end of a concert meaning that it's not just all ballads and it not, it's not just all that would definitely or... help. that would help. i mean usually we figure that out in the rehearsal mm -hmm. together to find some some uh how you say some some arch mm -hmm. that would work Exactly. Yeah. And what about merch? CDs? We're still selling CDs, believe it or not. <laughs> it's it's getting less and less by the year, but yeah, that's the only thing you can sell. We tried download cards, we tried memory sticks, they don't really sell. So CDs still sell. T-shirts. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Underwear. Underwear. Well, you Ooh. have underwear. I don't. I don't. What, sell whatever works, but <laughs> it's usually still CDs. So yeah. singers usually bring CDs, and we, you know, try to to sell it. Let's talk a little bit about high points and low points when you're on the tour. I mean, when you're on the road and you play every day and you're traveling every day, lots of things happen. Some well, some things are really really great, and some things are not so great. And um, so tell me a little bit about highlights, like what are some moments that you, like you even like when you think back on touring, you think about these moments or what is it that you really enjoy? What are the moments that you really enjoy mm -hmm. when you're touring? I mean, mostly it's about making the music together, obviously. Mm -hmm. We're not doing it for the money <laughs> or at least not in the first place. So if you have a good show with a good audience, it's it's a good moment. It can be a small show, it can be a big show. If you have an appreciative audience and they really like it and after the show they come up and say, well, this changed my life or whatever, and people mm -hmm. really do that. That's what I live for and I think everybody in the band. Mm -hmm. Of course, then there's big shiny concerts. I mean, our biggest one was with Audrey Mattel in, in Sono, in, in Bruno, and we opened for Lazzo Deci. We mm -hmm. had 700 people there, big stage, big big sound, big lights. That was nice, of course. But mm -hmm. I enjoy even smaller concerts, even in the living room setting, if people are really excited. It's the same fun for me. Mm -hmm. um. But the darker moments, I mean, usually, 
if you tour longer than two weeks after two weeks it usually gets dicey you get on each other's nerves if you see each other for 10 hours a day or more but since i i know the band very well so i know it's usually Peter Dworski and on bass and Ulf Strick on drums or, or Alex Bernard on drums. I've toured with them for, for years and mm -hmm. we've spent countless hours on the bus. So I know them very well and I know, uh, how to say, we know each other's boundaries very well. So if mm -hmm. one gets annoyed or one needs some space, everybody knows and respects that. So, so even in tense moments, actually, we were doing pretty well. Because you've been through these moments yeah, together yeah. over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about some shiny concerts, like when you have, d does having a beautiful hotel room uh, make up for a shitty concert or, <laughs> <laughs> but like you get, you get like a beautiful dinner and then the concert is kind of meh, but the dinner was nice. Like Yeah, it might make up, yes. Yes, sometimes? Yeah, usually, mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. During uh, when we were preparing, we were talking mm. about uh, a performance at Schloss mm -hmm. Elmau. It wasn't a shitty concert, I have to... I have to <laughs> well, it's, we're not... No, but the, the hotel Schloss Elmau is where the G7 meets and mm -hmm. they spend an incredible amount of money on whatever. So we ha we were booked there with uh, Audrey Mattels and they actually gave me a, a suite with a grand piano. As, as a room for the night, so that that was pretty. That was pretty sweet. That's definitely. pretty sweet. And yeah. then the pool in the morning and this and that and yeah. Mm -hmm. And the sauna with the view of the Alps and that that was something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of unbeatable, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Mm -hmm. That's kind of nice. And um, so, when you're on the road, sometimes also things happen that you really hope will never ever happen again. <laughs> Yeah, w one sticks out. Of course, it was. Uh, I guess I'm allowed to say that because it, uh, it was. Uh, I think she posted about it on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, it was yeah. Amy Allen. We played a show in in Valmes in in Czech Republic, and she went. Uh, it's difficult to explain. Anyway, after after the show, she went on stage, and it was dark, and she was on her phone. And she was walking around and in the dark she fell off stage into the, it was like, I don't know, a eight feet drop on mm -hmm. her head. And she had this huge cut here, was bleeding like, it looked like in a zombie <laughs> movie. <laughs> it was pretty scary. So she, we rushed her to the hospital and she got stitches. And she was a trooper. She she was performing next day in Prague. Mm -hmm. I think she was so, wearing a wide brimmed hat or something, no, or sunglasses. Like those French hats. Oh, a French. Oh, yeah. like um, uh, what are they called? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it it ended well, but that that was pretty scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've performed on that stage. That's a mm -hmm. that's that's a difficult thing to navigate, mm -hmm. and um, it's hard to see. Yep. So we're, Amy, yeah, so. we're glad you're okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay, and. You mentioned already that um, later, actually next week, you're going to start touring with Lauren Henderson. Mm -hmm. So what else is in store for you the next few months and also for 2023? Mm -hmm. Well, the the bigger thing is I got that gig with Lazo Deci that I used to do 20 years ago. I got this one back. So he tours about four months out of the year. How old is he? 84. <laughs> He's 84. Going on 85. So. <laughs> yeah. I uh, wish him a long life. So that's my main gig over there and everything else uh, I shuffle around his dates. Mm -hmm. So in this fall, just to give you an idea, so we're touring with Lauren for, for a month and then right back to back Lazo starts. That schedule is not filled up completely, but it's going to be about two months, probably 40 to 50 shows in those two months. Mm -hmm. And then Lauren's going to be back for another five gigs in, in December. And then, actually, for the first time in eight years, I'm doing my own trio again. It's going to be a project with Beatles covers. It's actually all in the can now. Already the LP is coming out in CD, and Yay. it's going to be released two or three weeks in in March 23. Mm -hmm. So that's my next big thing. And, of course, with you and Steve Clark before yes. that, we do it. With bassist Steve Clark, we're going to do a mm -hmm. show. I mean, a tour. 
Uh, February. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Starting on February 10th, I think. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, Arta. When are you performing with uh, Arta? Arta is coming. Arta Capsona is coming over for two weeks, actually, in between Latsa's tours. I have to sub out Latsa's tour for, for Arta. That's she, right. She's going to mm -hmm. come in in October. We start October 17th in, in Vienna, mm -hmm. at Jazzland in Vienna. Yeah. So, and uh, going back to, to your, your new project, your CD, the, uh, the Beatles one, what's it called? Fischbacher plays the Beatles. Yay, Fischbacher. Straightforward, it's like snakes on the plane. Fischbacher <laughs> plays the Beatles, you know what you get. You know what you get, yes. But you don't know what it sounds like. Because you That's did, right. um, that was, was it, that was last winter. We, we tend to go to our secret island that I, nobody, that I tell nobody about. And Walter actually mm -hmm. arranged the entire album within a week, pretty much. I think it was it took a, week. a bit longer, two mm. weeks. No, yeah, and it, now it was pretty fast. Weeks. It was pretty fast. And um, then you recorded it at Ulf's studio in mm -hmm. Germany mm -hmm. and um, with Peter. So it's um, Peter Dworski, right? And mm -hmm. Ulf Schlicker. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you're releasing it, um, I think you're doing singles. When are they coming out? Yeah, I do two singles prior to the whole album release. They come out mid-February and beginning of March. Then the album comes out two weeks prior to the tour and the tour starts mid-March. Mid we'll, we'll put the exact dates in the okay. description of this video. <laughs> and also where you can then listen to it. Mm -hmm. You're going to release it online? Yeah, it's going to be on all platforms. Mm -hmm. the usual. And you're doing CDs and vinyl. I'm doing well. CD and vinyl. Yeah. The vinyls, I mean, it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope I get it in time. It's very... It's, some of you might know it's very difficult to actually get the vinyl. They have a, 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 a turnaround of eight months or something. And mm -hmm. through some back channels I got in, hopefully I get it earlier. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So hopefully there will be much more on that and uh, much more concerts and tours with that project because, I mean, it's a gorgeous project of... of heard a lot of it and you can actually listen to some of it on Walter's YouTube channel he's got a few videos on there and um, how can they find your YouTube channel best is to go to my website walterfischbacher.com and there's all, all sorts of links up there mm -hmm. so here's the link to his website and then in the description I'm also going to link directly to his YouTube channel anything you want to add to your adventure of touring with singers as a final message keep on swinging <laughs> keep on swinging all right guys on that note i hope you had fun watching this and um i hope you're getting something out of this and see me next time again here on this channel with some new content in the meantime please also visit vocalmusician.org for our courses and um we'll see you next time thanks for watching